We just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, go over some trends we're seeing, as well as give you a short overview and highlight some talks that will take place over the next two days. So this is our second event in London, and as you can see, we continue to build a community of people interested in uh, building AI applications. Now, to date, many of those applications fall under three functional areas, computer vision, speech technologies, and natural language. So let's start by going through uh, each of these areas. Computer vision is probably the area with the most activity measured in terms of patents, number of startups, and use cases. You have uh, images and video being generated from cameras, digital imaging, and sensors like LiDAR, for example. Um, and deep learning has proven to be my check. All right. uh, deep learning has proven to be adept at several perception tasks. I feel like an MC up here, uh, involving images and video. Uh, the technology is becoming so prevalent that face recognition and mass surveillance are topics of interest to regulators and policymakers. But computer vision applications go way beyond uh, just face recognition. Manufacturers, for example, can check defects by placing inexpensive cameras along their production lines, and we have models capable of detecting even the smallest quirk in a medical scan that can save a patient's life. There are uh, many other possible applications as well. For example, uh, recycling stations can sort items uh, at a more granular level. Employers can inspect workers for life-saving equipment like having hard hats, safety belts, and safety vests. And later this morning, Baraja Gushav Tata will uh, describe probabilistic image classification models for predicting cancer. Now, tomorrow afternoon, two more speakers from Graminer will explore how computer vision models can be applied to satellite imagery and how that's optimizing, helping to optimize government services and policies in India. So let's look at techs. These days, the favored approach is to use some massive off-the-shelf model pre-trained on lots of data. So for example, OpenAI released a version of their GPT-2 model with over uh, 800 million parameters. And, but now researchers and practitioners are also beginning to understand that you need to infuse these models with knowledge or tune them for your specific application domains. So the objective is to build a machine reading comprehension system. And just like in self-driving cars where you have predetermined levels of autonomy, uh, progress in terms of machine reading will happen in stages. So uh, right now we're in the simple notification and FAQ assistance, but over time they'll become more personalized and we'll have autonomous assistance. Now we have numerous sessions and texts, including uh, talks from uh, people in healthcare, finance, media, and more. Now what about uh, pre-trained models for speech? There are a few reasons why one size fits all speech model hasn't quite yet materialized. You know, uh, spoken language is just not as precise as written text. And even if you have access to the best speech-to-text technology available, you often end up with a document with sentences that contain pauses, fillers, restarts, interjections, and ungrammatical constructs that make it very difficult. But uh, even with these challenges, there are many areas where speech has grown in recent years. Uh, for example, Comscore estimates that, estimates that by the end of 2020, about half of all online searches will use voice, which is pretty remarkable, and uh, smart speakers are, are expected to grow by more than 82% from 2018 to 2019, and by the end of the year, the installed base for such devices is ex expected to exceed 200 million. So the reality, though, is most companies still have a lot of structured data, and when it comes to structured data, uh, it's not clear that deep learning is head and shoulders above uh, the traditional machine learning or statistical techniques. So it's good for you to uh, start thinking about deep learning as a way to augment your other methods, but maybe not throw away all of the things that you're, you've been using in the past. So at this conference, for example, we have many sessions involving time series. And, I, and it, when it comes to time series, the state of the art uh, systems do incorporate deep learning, like I said, but uh, in conjunction with other existing techniques. So Arun Kajarwal of Facebook and Ira Cohen of Anadot will give an update of their very popular talk on sequence-to-sequence -sequence modeling for time series forecasting. And Saeed Tishman of Accenture will uh, describe some applications of machine learning to predictive maintenance.
We've already had two day trainings and a half day tutorials that cover the major deep learning libraries and tools and we have many more sessions over the next two days. Kim Hazelwood will describe how Facebook uses PyTorch and other tools to power large scale AI serv services. Uh, and Lawrence Maroney of Google will do a deep dive into TensorFlow 2.0. And tomorrow morning, Michael Maroney of Rise Lab will present new tools that can guide the use of production scale deep neural networks. So uh, reinforcement learning. So we continue to see more and more tools. So for example, Rise Lab's Ray uh, makes uh, large scale reinforcement learning much more accessible to regular developers. Uh, more importantly, we're also starting to see use cases for reinforcement learning. So this conference, we have several sessions. So for example, Emily Weber will deliver a keynote this morning where she'll explore the applications of RL for decision making and public policy. And two speakers from Adobe discuss the use of reinforcement learning for automating the management of large scale IT infrastructure. Current generation AI technologies are relying on data hungry methods like deep learning and reinforcement learning. And to serve the needs of companies wanting access to high quality label data, we have a new influx of startups focused on data labeling. Uh, now many of these startups began by focusing on labeling data for computer vision, which we mentioned earlier as probably be the most active category so far, but, but some of these companies are expanding to other data types including text, audio, and even time series data. Machine learning is beginning to be used across various stages of data pipelines, including to improve data quality. Uh, for example, the open source project HoloClean is a probabilistic data cleaning framework considered the state-of-the-art system for ML-based automatic error detection and repair. Ehab Ilias, one of the creators of HoloClean, will give a short keynote tomorrow morning on this topic. So another area where AI researchers and practitioners have coalesced is in developing tools and techniques for de-risking AI and machine learning. So tomorrow morning, we have a great keynote from Professor Marta Kwiatkowska of Oxford, one of the world's foremost experts on AI safety and reliability. We also have talks on new tools for privacy preserving machine learning, including a talk by Alex Ingerman of Google on their new tools for federated learning, and Chang Liu and Ji Zhao Zhang of Georgian Partners uh, will introduce their new tools for building differentially private machine learning models using TensorFlow. There's an arms race happening between security firms and a new set of companies that use deep fakes. Uh, tomorrow morning, Alexander Adam of faculty.ai will give a detailed overview of the space, including new algorithms for generating uh, fake media as well as the new algorithms for detecting them. Last year, we listed the many startups developing specialized hardware for machine learning for both training and inference and for use in data centers and edge devices. Some of that hardware is beginning to be released and used. Last month, for example, Cerebrus Systems described their wafer scale hardware for deep learning at our AI conference in San Jose. And tomorrow morning, Raf DeAndrea, who co-founded the company that is now Amazon Robotics, presents his vision for how autonomous indoor drones will drive the next wave of autonomous robotics development and growth. In a survey we conducted earlier uh, this year about AI adoption in the enterprise, responded, cited culture, uh, organization, and lack of skilled people among the leading reasons that held back their adoption of these technologies. So we're excited to have another great uh, set of speakers for our business summit that will happen over the next two days. So for example, later this morning, Baman Bamani of Rakuten will describe best practices and strategies that can enable companies to unlock the true potential of AI. So we have another outstanding program for you. And over the next two days, there will be many more great sessions. So we barely scratched the surface in our overview here. Uh, that will be critical to sustaining AI, the use of AI within your company. So as a conference organizer, as much as we're proud of the program, so don't forget to network uh, while you're here at the conference uh, with our speakers. We're always happy to talk to you. The many interesting companies in the expo hall, as well as with your fellow attendees. So for the next two days, this is your AI community.